Well, thank you very much. I, I kept hearing the word relentless, <laughs> <coughs> which I thought was the politer version for dog with a bone, which is the way we describe uh, this approach uh, in our office. Um, I just want to tell you how we got here today, at least how I got here today. In December of 2014, at a holiday party, my friend and constituent Sigrid Pinsky pulled me aside and asked me a very simple but direct question. Why aren't there any inpatient hospital beds for kids and teens in mental health crisis here in Santa Clara County? And in the moment, I thought, well, that can't possibly be. That can't possibly be right. So I went back to my office and I checked it out. And I discovered that it absolutely was right and absolutely positively and undeniably wrong. Wrong, just in so very many ways. Which of course prompted me to ask a series of other questions. How is it that in a county this big, we had no place for these kids? How is it that in a county this prosperous, we had no place for these kids? How is it that in a county where the need is so great, we had no place for these kids? And as it turns out, the answer was actually very simple and unacceptable. We had no place for these kids because we were shipping them out of town to hospitals far, far away. The need was so great that by 2016, we started to contract with San Jose Behavioral Health to serve a limited number of teens aged 14 to 17. And it's a help, but it's far from what we need to meet the demand, and it doesn't offer anything for younger kids. So all too often, at one of the toughest times in their lives, we're separating these kids from their families. They're away from their families, their friends, and their mental health caregivers. I rarely speak as a medical authority, but I gotta tell you, this is therapeutically unsound. And frankly, it discourages families from getting their kids the help they need. They're already going through hell. And then the system simply makes things worse. With hospital beds in San Mateo, Alameda, and San Francisco counties in short supply, some of these families were referred to facilities in Vallejo, Concord, Santa Rosa, Sacramento. And because of liability and safety protocols, parents are often not allowed to drive their own children, which can mean hours in the ER, waiting for an available bed, and then paying thousands of dollars for ambulance transport, quite possibly out of pocket. So once I understood all that, I proposed that we create a place for these kids right here in Santa Clara County. And now, a little more than eight years after Sigrid Pinsky first asked me that critical question, construction is underway. Finally, it's really going to happen. And while that realization is a source of some joy, I have to say it plainly, it took too long. It took too long. I say that because we're losing these kids. So if I speak with a sense of urgency, it's because we have to act with a sense of urgency. We need to act like we're losing these kids because we are in every city and town in this county. We've got young people taking their lives, kids who are going to the very same high school that I went to some years ago, and for too many families, this is all too real, all too personal, and all too immediate, which is why we can't waste another day. 
which is why we need to open the doors of this shiny new state-of-the-art facility as soon as we possibly can. Because these kids can't wait. Because we're losing them with every day that passes. Because every day of bad weather or delayed construction or just bureaucratic hesitation puts more kids at risk in a way that we just can't countenance. So I am glad, <coughs> excuse me, I am glad beyond description that we are finally going to make it happen. And that what today is just a great big hole in the ground will soon be the kind of acute care facility we have long needed in Santa Clara County for young people in crisis. A sanctuary, a place where young people can safely begin to heal, a place where they belong, right here, close to home. So to all who have made this day possible, I say thank you. Sigrid, where are you? Sigrid, thank you. Whether you knew it or not at the time, it was you who started us out on that journey all those years ago. And in fact, Sigrid, I want you to stand up so everyone can see you and join me in expressing our thanks for what you set in motion, whether you knew it or not. Sigrid, by the way, is today a member of our Behavioral Health Board, which is where she belongs to do even more good work. And I should also note that along the way, my colleague, Supervisor Chavez, leaned in to make sure that this facility will serve children with both psychiatric and medical needs. So I need to say thank you. Let me do that. Thank you, Cindy. Because of your efforts, we will do an even better job meeting the needs of the kids in this county. In fact, I need to say thank you to all of my colleagues on the board, as you heard earlier, all of my colleagues, past and present, who have been unanimous and steadfast in their support, none more so than my colleague, Supervisor Susan Ellenberg, who, as you heard, stood up to say, we've got to say out loud that the crisis is real, and it's here, and it's now. Susan, thank you as well. <clears throat> and only a handful of you will know, by the way, that our request for proposals, the RFP we put out all those years ago. Sherry, where are you? There you are. Well, our request for proposals failed to generate a proposer. <laughs> so our county executive, Dr. Jeff Smith, said, you know what? We'll build it ourselves. And so we shall. And I can say this because Jeff had to be somewhere else today. Jeff being Jeff, he said, we also have an opportunity now to replace those aging facilities at the Don Lowe Pavilion with 42 new beds in a 21st century state-of-the-art facility. And again, so we shall. So thank you, Jeff, for all of that. And, and while we're taking a moment to give thanks where thanks are due, let me say thanks as well to all of our healthcare partners at Stanford, Kaiser, Pacific Clinics, El Camino, Lucille Packard Children's Hospital, our community health partnership friends, and many, many more. I say thanks because our healthcare partners in the community will not only refer their patients to this facility once it's available, they'll also bring their talents and their skills and their expertise and their experience to the work we do on behalf of these kids. In partnership, we can do so much more. But first, we need a place to do it. So let me say thanks again, even as I exhort us, one and all, to hurry it up, to act with urgency, to understand that we can't let another day pass without making a place, a space, where these kids can heal safely, securely, and close to home. If we can do that, this will be a day we can all be proud of. Thank you all so very, very much. Thank you.